Okay, so what is the Spear V file format? Well, it might help to look at a, uh, just take a simple look at compilation in general. Let's say we have some C code. These C instructions can be written out, fine, but then under the hood, when we go and compile them, they are broken out into a s steps of intermediate assembly language instructions. And there kind of is a one-to-one -one mapping here. It's easy enough to generate these. And then from each of these instructions, the underlying zeros and ones, these are actually aliases for these zeros and ones. It's not quite that simple though, because I don't know why I said that, it's not really relevant. But what I'm getting at is that in OpenGL, um, all of this is sort of handled by the sort of handled by the graphics driver or the you know the API. The the code. It's it's handled. Actually, no, it's not handled by the API. It's handled by the driver. So the driver makes a bunch of optimizations, a series of optimizations, and turns that into shader code. What's the problem with that? The problem is that different graphics vendors have different conventions for how the GLSL instructions are broken down into intermediate steps, as well as how those steps work. So to get around that, Vulkan sort of takes this much, this part out of our hands and says, okay, we'll take the GLSL code, compile it to this intermediate Spear V code, and then that will be handled by Vulkan. This means that when there are errors, those errors are sort of compile errors or, you know, yeah, compile errors rather than runtime errors because compile errors are a little easier to catch. Also, if you make the best Assassin's Creed in the world, then graphics card vendors will sort of look into your code and say, how did you do this? And they'll optimize their own graphics cards according to your code, even if you're not using best practices, which is one reason why it's important to have sort of an intermediate byte code language um, to standardize everything. If we look over at Kronos Group's page, they have this example. Uh, yep, yeah, we take some GLSL code, and then that is compiled into the Spear V format, and yeah, it looks very similar to assembly language. We define in very low level um, the different symbols, the different variables, all of this, the functions which we're going to use. Thankfully, we don't need to we don't need to compile this stuff by hand. There are tools which we can use, which we'll be using in this video. All right, so um, here's our project. We're going to write our first shaders and compile them over to Spear V and then read that shader code in. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and make a new folder. And inside there, we will write our shaders. Uh, now, how can we do this? Uh, let me let me do the, the naive way. So normally we go uh, vertex.com text and fragment.text. Okay, great. We'll start with our vertex shader. Now we haven't really covered a lot yet. So we're just going to sort of hard code the values and we'll get back to that later. So we'll start with, we'll just do our standard GLSL.
Okay, all very exciting. So we define a set of positions and colors. We have X and Y. This is going to make a triangle. We'll have X going from the left to the center to the top. We have bottom left. Sorry, not bottom left. Uh, bottom center, top right, top left. Okay, so there's our triangle. And then we have our positions, uh, sorry, our colors, green, red, green, blue. Awesome. And we're using the global variable vertex index, which is updated uh, during the draw. So it'll be drawing vertex 0, 1, 2. That's how we'll make our triangle. Now note that I had layout here, then I decided to remove it. In GLSL, um, we can typically get away with not naming our layout locations, although Spear V might be a little bit different. Let's find out. So we'll go ahead and we'll do our fragment shader. Okay, so we take the color, add an alpha of one, and output that. Okay, let's try compiling this now. So if we head over to our, we have uh, C Vulkan SDK, and then inside here we have this binary folder, and there's this GL, GLSLC, uh, that's our GLSL compiler. That's the function which are uh, the, yeah, the program which we'll be calling. So we can go back, we can go to our shaders and we can make, uh, let's call this we have that and we're pretty much going to Okay, so if you're familiar with GCC, this is very similar. We have the name of the program that we're calling. The next input is the file that we're loading in there. And then we have output is named vertex.spv. Okay, so we can go ahead and run this. and it gives us some errors. It says the file format is not recognized. So this actually needs to be standardized. So we'll just go over and change this. So this is a fragment shader. We'll go shader.frag. And then this is a vertex shader. So we'll rename it shader.vert. Okay, cool. So we have those. We'll just update this. Okay, so now it's saying that we do need locations. We need location for all input output. Okay, so we'll just go back here and add that in. Try that again, and that has worked. So we've got these uh, Spear V files. They're not added, but they are here. We can actually, we can go ahead and add them. So we'll just go add existing items. Grab those ones, there they are. If we open this up, we can see that it's a binary uh, format, so we can trust that it's all there. Since it's a binary file, it has unprintable characters. But that doesn't mean the characters aren't there. I mean, here's the source code. It's just unprintable. So the next step is I'm going to write a file loader, which will open up this file, read it, and return the contents. So it's a binary file ultimately is ones and zeros. In other words, bytes and every byte is a character. So the source code will be a set of characters. Anyway, so just go and make uh, 
a header. There we go. Okay, so we're going to load files. So I'm just going to pop over to the config and we'll add another library. We'll add fstream. Okay. So this will be a utility function. So like I said, we're going to return a set of characters. Okay, so we're going to open up the file to read it. So we'll make an input file stream. And the arguments here are first of all, the file name, and then any options. So we'll go um, IO stream. The first thing we need is we need to know how big the file is and the standard way to do this in C or C++ is to sort of advance the pointer to the end of the file and then report um, the location of the pointer. So what we'll do is we'll start loading at the end and I'm also going to put in that we are reading a binary file, not a standard text file. Okay, so I had a bit of experience recently writing file loaders and I found that I was getting weird errors. And the problem with the errors is I was trying to print to show the error code, but I would usually do something like this. I go new line. The issue with new line is it does not flush the buffer. So usually with these streams, we have a buffer which fills up. And just because we request to print a new line doesn't mean it gets printed. On the other hand, std end line forces the flusher to buff. Uh, <laughs> forces the buffer to flush, if I can speak. And the benefit of that is that we see errors where they occur. So for that reason, I'm going with end line there. But anyway, what we need is we need to get the file size. Okay, so we just get the, um, we just query the location of the pointer of the reader because it's at the end of the file, that'll give us the number of bytes. And because one character is one byte, then we'll reserve that many entries in our vector. Then we'll reset the file pointer to the start of the file, and then we'll just go ahead and read that. So we'll go file, read, and we put the pointer that we want to read the location of uh, read the data into that is the um, data which is for a vector that's a pointer to the start of the vector and we'll pass in the number of bytes we want to read as indicated by file size we got that all we need to do now is close the file and then return that buffer Okay, now we can't really use this yet because we haven't really looked at creating the pipeline, but this is setting it up for the next video. Anyway, in this video, we had a look at a really, really vague view of Spear V, how it works, how we can write it from regular GLSL, compile it to Spear V, and also had a quick example of writing a file loader. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you again soon. Bye.